addled, sweaty, erratic, disgusting, staring down a teleprompter, hanging on to a podium for dear life, and he still is incoherent. He still can't get it done. Donald Trump's speech in Richmond, Virginia, was perhaps his most unhinged yet. And as our editor-in-chief at Midas Touch, Ron Filipkowski, has asked, how will ABC, CBS, NBC, The Times, and others report on Donald Trump mixing up the names of presidents, talking three times faster than normal, mispronouncing over a dozen words, garbling his syntax, switching mid-sentence to unrelated topics, and we could go on and on. We're going to cover it here on the Midas Touch Network because we want to raise the red flag that this behavior is not normal. First clip I'm going to show you from Donald Trump's speech over this weekend in Richmond, Virginia, is Donald Trump confusing President Biden with Barack Obama, and Donald Trump say says that Putin doesn't respect Obama. Play this clip. Get that war settled. It's a bad war. And Putin, you know, has so little respect for Obama that he's starting to throw around the nuclear war today. You heard that, nuclear. He's starting to talk nuclear weapons today. And you see the crowd there was absolutely stunned. They're there for their cult leader. They don't know how they're supposed to react to that. Is this normal? Is this how he behaves? I guess we're supposed to be into this. What is he even talking about? Here, Donald Trump just says a bunch of noises. Play the clip. Ding, boom, this is me, I, I hear, bing. Next, Donald Trump talks about his cult being the greatest movement, even in Argentina, even in Argentina. He's, what? Play this clip. And they say, always trying to demean, well, MAGA really uh, represents 48% of the Republican Party. No, it represents 96% and maybe 100%. We're getting rid of the Romneys of the world. We want to get Romneys and those out. But they know that we are the only ones who can stop them. We're the only ones. This is the greatest movement in the history of our country, maybe in the history of any country, even Argentina. They went MAGA. You know Argentina, great guy. He's a big Trump guy. He loves Trump. I love him because he loves Trump. When he called, I took his call. And anybody that loves me, I like them. But he's good. And, and he is, and he's a MAGA guy. But it's a slightly different form of MAGA. He is make Argentina great again. That's pretty good. I said, you can have that. And he is. He's doing a good job over there. He's cutting like hell. He's getting rid of a lot of waste and a lot of things. And I hope they do well because it's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful country. But I think they really have a, a, good, uh, a good head man right now. He's a tough guy. But that's why they're weaponizing law enforcement for high level election interference. Then Donald Trump talks about how there are pupils from countries who speak languages that nobody knows about all of these pupils. What? Play this clip. Well, and they're going to destroy all of that. And you see what's going on in New York? They have pupils from foreign countries, from countries where they don't even know what the language is. We have nobody that even teaches it. These are languages that nobody ever heard of. They're and then as part of his stump speech that we've seen before, Donald Trump says, folks, this is just what I do. I interpose other names. I mix up the names on purpose, he says. Play this clip. It's, I have to be very, very careful. We have many of them. I uh, purposely mix up like a name like Bird Brain. You know who Bird Brain is, right, Nikki? <laughs> With Nancy Pelosi. I, I, I put them in because they're interchangeable in my mind. And except I have to say, I have to say, I shouldn't say this about a semi-Republican, but I think Pelosi's probably a little bit smarter, actually. It's too bad to say. But you know what? So you interchange them, and then they go out with stories. I cannot be sarcastic, so I, I try not to be. I just did that thing for the first time in like two weeks because it's a disaster. Guaranteed, the fake news, the enemy of the people, will say he could not find his way off the stage. And then he proceeds to call our country the United States. Play the clip. Production in the United States, just as the price. Then he talks about 
being respectored. Play the clip. And perhaps most importantly, we are a nation that is no longer admired, respected, or listened to on the world stage. Then he glitches when talking about the bipartisan border deal. Play the clip. Biden border will. Well, you know this, right? The Biden border bill would turbo. He then talks about how he wants the Republican Party to be 100% MAGA. And he says that they don't want Romneys, they don't want moderate Republicans, they don't want moderate conservatives, they just want MAGA. Okay, play the clip. And they say, always trying to demean, well, MAGA really uh, represents 48% of the Republican Party. No, it represents 96% and maybe 100%. We're getting rid of the Romneys of the world. We want to get Romneys and those out. Then he talks about how thrilled he is to be in the beautiful of Virginia. Play the clip. Hello, Richmond. I'm thrilled to be back in the beautiful of Virginia. We love Virginia. How much? Now, this one is truly vile. I mean, the other stuff is as well. But he talks about the special prosecutor, Nathan Wade, in the Fulton County District Attorney case. And then he talks about Nathan Wade, and then Donald Trump makes like a sex gesture to the audience. Play the clip. And her lover, Nathan Wade. And they hired him for almost a million dollars because of his great, great experience. Of course, he didn't have any experience. He had experience in something else. You know that. A lot of experience. Next, Donald Trump attacks Fulton County District Attorney Fawny Willis. Play the clip. In a short, I know a lot of people. We like a lot of people. I happen to have a very good relationship with a woman called Melania. Yeah. But I would venture to say in all the years that I've known her, I might not have called her 2,500 times. That's a... <laughs> I know I didn't send 3,500 text messages. And Next, Donald Trump talks a bunch of nonsense about Afghanistan. Play the clip. If uh, they listened to me with Afghanistan, we would have been back a long time ago. A long time ago. The t Next, Donald Trump whines. Whine, just a whiny person, a loser whining about how the 2020 election is stolen. It's what he's talking about in 2024. Play this clip. 20. It was a rigged election. It was a rigged election. The votes came in, then they added a lot of votes to it. You, you saw it. It was a rigged, totally rigged election. They know it too. The only thing they don't want, they don't want people talking about that election. Even Fox. Fox is afraid to talk about it. They're all afraid to talk about it. Next up, Donald Trump talks about how he thinks that phone calls work miracles sometimes. Play the clip. 20. It was a rigged election. It was a rigged election. The votes came in, then they added a lot of votes to it. You, you saw it. It was a rigged, totally rigged election. They know it, too. The only thing they don't want, they don't want people talking about that election. Even Fox. Fox is afraid to talk about it. They're all afraid to talk about it. And that speech in Richmond, Virginia, followed his speech in Greensboro, North Carolina, where he also continued to have these cognitive moments when he glitched like this. Play the clip. Did you just see Maduro, Venezuela? It's uh, unbelievable. And when he glitched like this. Play the clip. Heard that Saudi Arabia and Russia will repeat your... Oh. And folks, just so I can show a contrast here, may I just play, I'll play one clip right here of President Biden from this past week. Let's play President Biden, play the clip. Folks here in Brownsville and all along the border know that. We need to have their backs, your backs. And I want the people to understand clearly what happened here. This bill was in the United States Senate, was on its way to being passed. Then it was derailed by rank and file politics, rank partisan politics. The U.S. Senate needs to reconsider this bill, and those senators who oppose it need to set politics aside and pass it on the merits, not on whether it's going to benefit one party or benefit the other party. It's about whether it benefits the American people. It's what the American people deserve. And the Speaker of the House needs to put this bill on the floor, because if he put it on the floor unrestricted, it would pass. 
the majority of Democrats and Republicans in both houses support this legislation until someone came along and said, don't do that, it'll benefit the incumbent. That's a hell of a way to do business in America for such a serious problem. We need to act. It's time for the speakers and some of my Republican friends in Congress who are blocking this bill to show a little spine. Pass a bipartisan board, bipartisan, as I go remember, bipartisan, conservative leaders supported this. Border security bill. Let's remember who we work for, for God's sake. We work for the American people. Let me Folks, it is so critical that what we talk about is the importance of our democracy, but also the importance of normalcy. And when you see that speech of Donald Trump, you can't normalize that behavior. And also, there are serious red flags that are right there that are staring us in the eyes. Y'all remember in the 2020 debate, right, the moment where uh, Donald Trump said, proud boys, stand back and stand by. Remember how that was like, oh my gosh, he's saying proud boys, stand back and stand by, right? Well, now in Donald Trump's speeches, that was shocking when he said that then, right? Now in Donald Trump's speeches, he's bragging about the January 6th insurrectionists and the song that he made with them, which he plays instead of the national anthem. And he brags about making this song and he calls them the hostages. He says he made a song with the hostages. I'm going to play this clip in a moment, but just think about that, folks. So when Donald Trump goes to the debate, by the way, I don't think Donald Trump's ever going to actually debate President Biden because you see him. But when Donald Trump shows up at debate and he starts talking about the January 6th insurrectionists, are hostages and he sing a song with them and it's so beautiful. What? Is legacy media then gonna go, oh my gosh, can you believe it? Yes, we can. Because while all of y'all legacy media people, you're focusing on, oh my God, is President Biden wearing new sneakers? Is he wearing yeah, running shoes instead of, instead of actual dress shoes? Oh, no, Donald Trump saying things like this, play the clip. They've done to people, you heard the hostages singing. That was the hostages. They're the J6 hostages, I call them, because they are hostages. They're policemen, they're firemen, they're accountants. They're lawyers in some cases. They're put in jail for extended periods of time, for very long periods of time. They're hostages. You heard them singing. You heard the spirit that they had? The spirit is unbelievable. That song became the number one song. And you, you can- Folks, Please share this video with people that you know, family members, friends, coworkers, colleagues, so you can show just how dangerous and unhinged Donald Trump is. I did some other videos of his speech earlier that day in North Carolina, but share this video so people can see where we need to get the word out together and we will do that. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. Hit subscribe. Let's get to 3 million subscribers together. Have a wonderful day. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.